It's this right here if you want to really. Yeah, okay, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm having a Doomer Chick astrologer explain to me why I'm never going to get my Doomer Chick forever, while it's, why it's never going to happen. So Ariel is going to explain <laughs> to me why I'm completely doomed. I will never. Now... She said, I have met a few basket cases. Well, oh, we that's can't argue very, that. very but, true. But uh, anyway, so point to me why I will okay. never. This is the reason. Um, <laughs> this I is my chart. This would... what, is this what's called my chart? Yes. Uh, so where okay, is so the... right here. Where, where did I go wrong with what, the Doomer Chicks forever? What we're this looking at. This is nothing at. that pile of fish, green singles can what, get me out of. What we're looking at, yeah. this in the center, is your birth chart. Okay, there. so this is right here. There you go. That is it. And then on the outside wheel, this yes. is the current uh, movements of the planet. So and these there's are kind nothing of in the outside wheel. The well, present, the okay. present versus this is the snapshot of when you were yes. born. Um, if you want to focus in on relationship stuff yeah. right this minute, yeah, which is where the, you immediately b b before went. Before the battery <laughs> collapses. Before I lose my battery forever. Okay, so, so why you, am I... You were born with Venus at 29 degrees in leo in retrograde in your 12th house of pisces this is a house that is traditionally difficult people that have you know planets or more you know one or more in this house do go through a lot of transcendence of suffering because it is about that um, traditionally the 12th house was also considered a house of incarceration potential imprisonment, institutions, oh etc. Um, I can really, I can relate because I've personally got three planets in my 12th house. It is also the Pisces house, so it is a very spiritual, uh, metaphysical, romantic, musical, dreamy, poetic, and sometimes depressive kind of energy, okay? So I could say that if love is going wrong, you do feel really down. That's not unusual for you to be feeling that but, if love isn't going well. So how come, the, until I went down the doom, down into this rabbit hole, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, it's it, it was never that hard for me. About what year did you, would you say that that exactly, like you could pinpoint it a little bit? When, when do you feel like that change really occurred? It's when I went, well, it, 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 it's which is more relevant to my to my celibate situation. Is it going down the doomosphere mm -hmm. or is it walking away, you know, from a six-figure job, right. a beautiful home in Austin, Texas, a very stable nice home, nice career, a bunch of friends, active social life to go uh, disappear down into the Peruvian Amazon jungle and then 14 years later find myself living in a converted tool shed uh, behind a shack on the side of the road for half the year and driving around with my thumb up my ass the other half of the year. Living which in one a van the, down by the river? Uh, yeah. <laughs> which of these is the reason that I the can't reason, find a doomer chick The reason forever? that I want to know the timeline. It, it, it is this. But that's the, it has nothing to do with either one of those. The reason the, that I would like to you know understand better the timeline of when you feel that that real change happened is because it would tell me what was going on on the... Um, on the other transits that may have impacted uh, your social it, life. It, it, it and some it, of this really is more sociological and psychological than it is astrological, because I'm very of the mind that it's not all astrology. We are a combination of many different things. You do live in America, and there but what I'm Americans saying, uh, are obsessed with normalcy, and if you are seen as being a radical or outside of the norm, then yes, you are going to be lonelier. You are going to have a harder uh, uh, time. Yeah, the road less yeah. traveled. I mean, that's my but life. But what I'm saying... <laughs> Well, all doomers. Uh, yes. To a, to I mean, a degree. you know, that's but what, what, I what, what I'm saying is this. <laughs> if, 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 if I had not gone down into this rabbit hole. Sure. If I had stayed in my real estate career, as we were talking about last night, I would probably be a multi-millionaire well, right now, you living know, in a beautiful home. You know what your, I'm saying? Check your camera to just kind of like pull uh, in on But this. Would, would this chart 
look the same. Of course it would. But if the, I course. had a, of course but, it would. but I don't think I would be having this issue in my in my love life if you see what I, you understand my question I do understand it but I also am going to tell you that astrology matters energy and that's very much what it's about so no matter how you cut it how you play it these are the energies you came in with in life so yeah. getting back to just running it down yeah. Venus is definitely the way we interact with people it is our partnerships relationships social interactions our social style um, it is at 29 degrees of your chart, and I believe that is the highest degree of all your planets. It is. Yeah, so Venus is very important. That's why you say you are a very social person. You always say that, and that makes a lot of sense. That relationships of all kind would make would be very important to you. That, that's just mm -hmm. a huge part of your life. Um, it is in Leo. So yes, you like to party. You like to have fun. You like music. You like performances. You like the arts. Um, you know, when you're in love, you're kind of the traditional romantic movies, you know, dinner, flowers, you know, it's like the traditional symbols of romance are there. Um, Leo, I think, is also a very sexual sign, so that's important to you as well. It is in retrograde, though, so Venus often, you may really suffer from a little bit of that Virgo thing where you go in and you kind of like, you second guess yourself a lot, or you rethink things a lot. Or you may get very excited about somebody very quickly yeah. and then decide, oh, oh, that's not good. And maybe I'm in a little too deep. The reason that you tend to jump in very deep with somebody you feel passionate about is because Venus is conjunct Pluto. Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. Scorpio is extremely sexual. Okay. And I would say because of this, your relationships definitely transform you. Um, and they transform your life, whether you like them to or not. Um, and it is so dulcimer, hard. Just, why did, why, what, okay, that. It is hard for you to hold on to something for a very, very long haul because Pluto is a transformative planet. It deals with those life, death, and rebirth cycles. And so why that's hard is because you're going to change, they're going to change. If you can change together, then you can hang on to it. But if you can't change and grow together it dies, right? Sometimes very dramatically. This can also lead to intensity because Pluto energies tend to either love it or hate it. You don't feel halfway about people. If you feel like, you know, average about someone, it doesn't excite you. You have to feel like the cylinders are turned all the way up. And because of this 12th house, this is the place that it's playing out in. This is a very spiritual house. This is why you've said to me, I've experienced that soulmate kind of love and that's what I'm looking for again. And if I don't feel that, it's hard for me to get excited about it because this is definitely a place that you would be looking for that. You would be looking for that definite, you know, spiritual, mental, psychological equal. And it's very hard for your passions to stay turned all the way up if that's not there. So where did Dulcinea walk but into you, this mess? You are a very romantic soul. <laughs> I mean, that's just no doubt about it. You have a lot of love to give. But you also want to get a lot of love back. Leo energy is not going to stick around in a relationship where they feel unappreciated. <laughs> My sister has that placement. I know. Like, if they're not appreciating her, if they're not kissing her ass a little bit sometimes, <laughs> she's going to get rid of it. It's not, you know, it's just like, nope, that's not doing it for me. So that's a big part of it. And so, yeah, you can attract people here that are either very dramatic. You might have had some drama queens. I know. Yeah. Nah. Um, Pluto energy could be very intense people. Like I said, you might get some basket cases. You might get some real mental head case kind of people because this does deal with psychology. And because you are dealing with a 12th house, have you ever dated somebody who'd been in prison or an institution or medicated? I mean, mm -hmm. these are the things that go along with this it house. It needed to be medicated. Or a religious fanatic. Yeah. That could be in there too. Have you ever found none of those? Nah, yeah. nah. <laughs> Well, those no, are all... actually, I dated the high priestess of the oh, yeah. Church of the OTI. I remember that story. Yeah, six months. I was not just uh -huh. any member of the church. The <laughs> there most you evil, go. The most evil cult on the planet. I was, there you go. Yeah, the high priestess of this the could also be Church of the OTI. People who are uh, musicians, poets, yeah. a little bit different. Yeah, a little bit different. Or, this is a tough one, Sam, 12th house energy, Pisces house stuff. This can also be people that you feel like you can help. You have a soft spot well, for people savior that are complex. See people that are a little yeah. broken, and you go, "Oh, all they need uh, is yeah. some love. All they need is a little care, mm. and I can fix them up." A little Thorazine. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know. Oh, <laughs> a little, little lobotomy. A little, a little, little electroshock. <laughs> Hydrotherapy. <laughs> lithium. It's all going to work out. <laughs> but this is, you know, this can be a, a challenging placement for Venus, of course, because it's in retrograde, because it's next to a very heavy planet. We talked in our other video about Pluto being kind of that doomy planet, you know. Mm. Um, maybe that's why you love the Doomers. <laughs> that's why you love us so much. Uh, but that, that can be challenging because it can bring a lot of life and death cycles, metaphorically, to your relationships. Um, wouldn't surprise me, you know, if you if you had somebody that, you know, like, like finding about your ex-wife who, you know, passed away. This is kind of par for that course. Um, but, you know, it's this is the thing. It's, it's uh, you, you work with what you got. I was born with Saturn <laughs> in my relationship house. Let me tell you, that that's real fun. Um, we all have our things in our in our charts to deal with, for sure. Um, but as I said, I just don't think, e even if the, this would, st as you were saying, this yes. would still be my chart. Yes. Regardless if you were, of, if you were of the born decisions the, if that I made you were I've born on that life, day and that year, this, at that time, that is what your chart is. Uh, yeah. so. But I just don't think I would mm. be in the in the romantic desperate Miasma. straits I am if mm. I had not made these decisions that I made for whatever reason 14 years ago sure. I don't think I would be in this situation the one thing that I you know if I was going to give advice yeah. whether you want it or not but, but if I was going to give advice on how to make the best of this you know energy is I would say that the best thing to do is to slow your roll <laughs> Which is to say, don't jump in, you know, before you don't know if there's sharp rocks at the bottom of the pool, because this can be a kind of person that can fall well, love first at first sight. Well, first there has to be a pool to jump into. Right. I don't you... even have a pool to jump into. <laughs> and at times like that, you might just say you're kind of getting denied so that you learn something important. That's all I can say about that. I mean, I'm <sighs> I'm in a real transitional, weird phase myself. Well, and... maybe I should just get a dog. 